Did our two-year-old daughter glitch, or am I just living in her origin story? Okay, so I actually have two glitches that involve her. This is the first and I will edit the next if anyone wants. First glitch. This happened about eight weeks ago. It was past bedtime and I could hear her awake in her bedroom, which she shares with her four-years-old brother. This is not unusual and they're really cute when they play and chat at night. So no big deal, right? I walked up the stairs and I can hear their little chatting and giggles. So I decided to pop in and see if they need anything and remind them it was sleep time. I stepped over the safety gate, so I was inside their bedroom, but only about one step inside. The hall light was on and lit up their bedroom. My son is on the left bed and my daughter is on the right. I say something like, what are you two up to? and they sheepishly tell me they're playing. My eyes adjust and I can see my son in his bed and my daughter in hers. I can see them moving and getting comfortable as we chat. The light is low but enough to see their shapes of them, the reflection in their eyes, and their bedroom floor which is a narrow gap between their beds. In a small English council house. We chat for about three minutes and I ask them if they need anything. I clearly hear my daughter's voice answering me from her bed. As we are talking, I feel something brush the back of my leg. I didn't even look to check because we have cats and those little devils follow me everywhere. One must have jumped over the safety gate and was coming to see if anything interesting was going on. Something felt a bit weird though, and after maybe five seconds I realized I hadn't heard the gate rattle as it always does when the cats jump over it. Ah. Uh, the cheeky little fur demon must have snuck in when I put them to bed and that is probably why the kids are awake and giggling. I turn and look at the small gap behind me, expecting to see a little black cat. And I shit you not. My two-year-old daughter is standing there. I am so shocked I say to her how did you get there, and that little girl just starts giggling her little butt off. Like hysterical giggling. I start nervously laughing. I say, you were just in bed. Did you just teleport little miss? And we all start laughing. I am persistent and ask a few more times, how did you get behind me, but she doesn't answer me. Just keeps giggling sweetly. I ask her brother, how did she do that, and he just carries on laughing. I even say, what is going on here? What are we all laughing about, but neither can answer, and I am baffled. After a minute or two, I say something like, all right, super baby, let's get back in bed. I tuck them back in and close the door behind me. I am totally freaked out, but not scared or anything. Just utter confusion. It felt like I had just looked up and the sky was green. Now, I had been looking at her in her bed. I was talking to her. I could hear her voice coming from her bed. I did not see her get out of bed. I did not see her walk toward me down the thin strip of floor space. I did not hear her footsteps on the floor. She didn't make a peep of noise. It was like she just appeared. I told my partner and together we tried to figure it out. But it felt like something impossible had happened. Eventually, he just said, glitch, and here I am. My daughter's second glitch. If you remember the layout of their bedroom, there are two beds, parallel to each other with a narrow gap in between. At the head of their beds is a window which overlooks the back garden. This happened not long after the first event, maybe 10 to 20 days after. It was close enough that the moment it happened I instantly thought, not again. In a kind of acceptable way. It was long past bedtime for them. Probably just after midnight. They had gone to bed on time and I hadn't heard a peep from them. I let my dog into the back garden to do her thing and I started walking down my garden to a chair we have at the far end. 
It was dark by this time, but the moon was out so I could see well enough. I got halfway down the garden and turned to look at my house and instinctively looked up to their window. The light of the moon was hitting the window in a way that made the glass look kinda white, even though their blinds were closed. But I didn't just see the blinds and the window. I saw my daughter's silhouette, Dot standing on the windowsill. I can remember it as clearly as anything. Like a flashed love memory. It was a completely black silhouette, her size and shape, hands up to the glass and I couldn't make out any details or features. I recognized it was my daughter because of the size, but at this point I just knew there was a kid up at the window and I ran like shit upstairs. I rushed into their room and flicked the main light on straight away. I had already started talking and blurted out a word like hey about to ask her what on earth she was doing. But I stopped in my tracks. Both the kids are in their beds. I figured she jumped down quickly and was pretending to sleep. I actually walk up to her and try talking again, but this kid is fast asleep. If you've ever seen a young child in deep sleep, it isn't something they could fake. Slightly sweating, pink cheeks, sprawled out like a dead weight. I am so shocked now. Because I am so certain of what I saw. I check my son even though I knew it couldn't logically be him, but he is sleeping deeply too. I just back out of their room feeling pretty flabbergasted. This time I definitely got creeped out a bit, along with a familiar confusion and disbelief. I went back outside and checked. The window was lit up in the exact same way. Only no weird toddler figure looking back at me. This is a minor glitch, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it as it just happened this week. I'm the kind of person that usually doesn't pay in cash, but when I do, I'll put my change in a cup holder in my truck. So the other day, I buy some drinks at a gas station, the total is 5.95 and I pay with $6. I recall getting the nickel and as usual, I place it in the cup holder on top of my small pile of change. The following day as I'm driving around I reach down to get some gum which I keep in the other cup holder when I notice a half dollar sitting on top of my change pile. It immediately catches my attention because half dollars aren't that common and I don't remember when was the last time I got one, much less when I would have placed it on my change pile. It's very strange to me because it's sitting at the top and my last cash transaction were those drinks I mentioned. To be clear to any non-Americans, half dollars are much bigger than a nickel. I have three of these basket boxes, all the different sizes. When I got my dog last year, I started using one of the baskets for storing his toys. It does not have a lid or something, so you can always see what's inside. In November, I and my boyfriend moved together. Two households merged into one and ended up in a kind of chaos. Moving boxes everywhere, you know the struggle. About a week after moving, I placed two of the baskets in the living room and also wanted to put the toy box in its new place. It was gone. We searched everywhere. Old flat, which was completely empty, new flat, all cellars, old and new, garages, even my mom's house, because I thought maybe it was transported in her car and she just took it out. Nothing. She hadn't even seen it. We tried to remember who carried it, but none of the helpers, five people in total, remembered seeing it during the move. I was so sad for my dog to have lost his toys. He's not that playful with the toys, but had his favorites he'd not want to miss. So after a while we unpacked most of our stuff and rearranged the remaining moving boxes in a small room. We even reorganized what was in the remaining boxes to clear up some space. We then only entered this room to open the window from time to time or to grab the vacuum cleaner. When you enter, there's like one meter of space to the left until you hit the wall. The vacuum cleaner was placed in the corner and one box was standing next to it by the wall. Everything else was nicely arranged in the back of the room. For the next months I searched for the basket whenever I searched for other stuff. It was like on my mind all the time so I always had an eye open just like when you passively look out for your child even though you're doing other stuff. In April, we moved again. 
We did not put boxes in the room or remove that inside until the day we moved. So everything was being packed where it sat. Guess what appeared halfway into bringing stuff to the new flat? Yep, the basket. Just as I remembered it, with a green and red rope laying on top of the other toys, which makes it really hard not to see when actively looking for it. It was standing in front of the moving box that sat next to the vacuum cleaner all this time. Just in front of it. I entered the room and couldn't believe my eyes. My boyfriend neither. We felt so stupid. How could we not see it all the time? We would have stepped over it 25,262 times. I don't get it till this day. Nobody had it, nobody moved it, we only had guests once for Christmas which were not involved in helping us move our stuff. We even had a camera installed in the living room with a perfect view down the hallway. We would have seen if anyone had put it there, thought about sleepwalking for some time. As I read more and more about parallel realities and stuff I really believe it just glitched into another one. What do you think? Just found out about this Reddit and wanted to share my story. I always tell myself it was just a dream or a deja vu. I first experienced it when I was 18 it was 2016 in college. I woke up expecting that day to be Wednesday, and I went to my small pantry to look for breakfast, and saw the cup of noodles I ate the day before, and thought that I had just forgot for buying another cup of noodles, I just drank coffee, saw my wallet and thought I had extra cash, bought a muffin at the bakery, then I went and rode a bus. And weirdly, it was the same bus I rode yesterday, since I knew the driver, and he always greets me. I nodded at him and said good morning, that was the time it felt weird opened my phone to check on my girlfriend and saw a message that we will be vacant for the second subject, I entered our classroom, and got confused when our professor of modern physics was sitting on front, waiting for us. It was 5 or 10 minutes before her class, and she's always early, she was my favorite professor. I asked my classmate, what's Mrs. M doing here? Shouldn't Mr. T be our first period? Then my classmate told me that Mr. T's period is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it was Tuesday today. Chills run through my spine, but I laughed and told him to stop kidding around, then he showed me his phone and the date was the date yesterday. I went speechless as he laughed at me, then I told myself this day is a deja vu. I went on my day, saw the people I saw yesterday, talked to the same people, did the activities we did, and I got higher scores since I knew most of the answers. I went to my girlfriend's school, we went and ate dinner together, I walked her home, kissed her goodbye and went back to my boarding house, all of the things I did yesterday, I even looked at my study table to look for my notes and calculus that I wrote after I went home, but it was not there. It happened to me three or four times now. And I'm a physics major grad. I am reading a lot about altering time and space pattern. But the nearest thing I can conclude is it was just a dream that I happened to live again in real life. If you made it thus far means you like the stories, comment if you have experienced any glitches or better mail them to me and I will include your story in the next compilation. Man, I haven't been on Reddit in 6 plus months, but I have been wanting to share this story and get others' opinions. There are always skeptics or maybe an explanation someone else can find that I can't think of. Obligatory TLDR at the end, sorry for the length. I suck at storytelling, it's 2am, and I just generally suck. Other people in the story. Lance, my kid's father. Have been separated for 6 years and our daughter is 7. Non-biological children we share are still our kids. Great co-parenting friendship. Really one of my best friends, but absolute worst exes. No possibility of rekindling the past. Works out of town 90% of the year so rarely home. Carrie really is a good friend of Lance's. Carrie and she really helped Lance with his kids and kept him together after our breakup. I've met her a few times over the years, but never really got to know her until I moved in with Lance at the end of January 2022. Lives in a different state, but visits every now and then. 
long setup story made short. I needed some major help in January, so Lance offered for my kids and me to live in his house until I could get my stuff together. By March I was good, but the housing market hasn't been. Never know how to begin so, I'll just dive on in. For a couple of weeks, the stars aligned and both Carrie and Lance were in town. One night Lance went to drink and play pool and I was cleaning and organizing the kitchen when Carrie came to hang out for a bit. All I had was water to drink and no drugs in me. Earlier that day, I had been given a grinder from another friend, but since I don't partake anymore, I asked Carrie if she wanted it. Important note, it was over messenger, so no vocal conversation had happened about the grinder yet. She said yes and said it's so pretty, so I sat it on the corner of my desk in my room where I could see it from the kitchen. I'm pretty forgetful so I wanted to make sure she got it since she was leaving in a couple of days and I wouldn't see her. Carrie showed up around 1 AM. When she texted that she was on her way, I grabbed the grinder and put it on the kitchen counter. She sat down at the bar counter opposite the main kitchen area I was working in so we could talk while I did my thing. Within five minutes I grabbed it and handed it to her mentioning how I didn't want to forget it later on. She took it, opened it up, and said it's so pretty, before placing it into her little backpack. Fast forward three hours. It's 4 AM. Carrie is high, Lance is home and super drunk, and I'm chasing them around the kitchen trying to kick them out for reheating curry and leaving messes everywhere. Lance asks if I'd given her the grinder yet. Yes came from me, while well not yet came from Carrie. I joked about how she's cut off BC it was the first thing I did and being completely sober, remembered every detail of how it went. Down to the tone and pitch of her voice, where both of us were and what song Alexa was playing. I was so adamant I asked if I could check her bag which is something I'd never do for fear of offending her. Yay people pleasing? The grinder wasn't in her bag, on the counter where I remembered placing it, or on the desk corner. Knowing how I am, I went and checked the living room couches too. I searched for 20 minutes before walking into my room for the umpteenth time to look at my desk. I found it sitting a foot and a half to the left, on the other side of a small three-inch tall basket of pens I had sitting there. Other than overlooking it five to nine times in a rush before seeing it, I can't think of why I had missed it before. Why was it in a spot I hadn't placed it, even in the fake memory? Lance had even looked in my room. It's also not normal at all for me to remember mundane events that actually happened, let alone a completely fabricated one. Another important note to add is that this was only the third time I'd spent more than five minutes around her. I hadn't known her well enough to be able to imagine her exact mannerisms and tone of voice in a detailed memory. The cherry on top? Lance has a camera in his kitchen that is set to auto record with motion sense after a certain time. In his inebriated state, he didn't turn it off, but there's still no footage of that time or after. I don't remember if the memory was just full or if it stops recording after so long, but we can't look back to see what we were doing when I thought I had given it to her. TLDR, a text conversation between a friend and I became a very vivid memory, exact images, voices and all. Never happened, but an object was lost for a time and found after 20 minutes of searching. Placed in a fairly visible area. This is one of the biggest personal glitches I've ever had. I work in the admitting department of my local hospital, and I also help the business office with miscellaneous billing duties. One of the things I do is keep track of obituaries. When someone's obituary appears in the newspaper, I check to see if they still owe the hospital money. If they do, I clip the obit, fill out a form, and then keep track of how their insurance pays and whatnot. A few years ago, I've worked there for 20 plus years, one of my co-workers in the dietary department retired and passed away soon after, I know, because I processed her obituary. This co-worker's daughter was really good friends with my cousin, so the daughter was even over at my cousin's house the day after my co-worker's funeral. They had a big wake for her mother and everything. Today, as I'm working on ER registration, the daughter comes in and says her mom is in the ER. I was brought up short, I thought, what? 
I didn't say anything for a moment, so my office mate had to step in for me and look up this lady's mother. Sure as shit, it's the woman who died years ago. My office mate lets the daughter back into the ER to see her mom, and I am unable to find the obit form I filled out. Edit 1, I heard back from my cousin, and he's as weirded out as I am. The co-worker's daughter has no memory of the wake or anything, but she said she's been getting this stuff from the people around her for the past few days. People remember her mom dying, even funeral details and the like, but the co-worker's daughter doesn't remember any of it, plus, her mom is right there, it's freaky. Spoke with my cousin instead of texting him. The co-worker's daughter said it was her dad that died and not her mom, but she also said that's not the way any of the people who run into her remember it. They're asking where her dad is, how he is today, he's not answering his phone or texts, etc., and to her, the man has been dead for over 10 years. Two thousand nineteen is mostly gone. I remember I got very sick in Jan of two thousand nineteen. I had pneumonia and a high fever. After getting better, I was so tired, my doc checked me for mono and Lyme, both negative. I checked my medical records and confirmed this. The rest of the year is missing. No yearly physical, no dentist appointments, things on my work calendar, I can't recall at all. I only know this, because I bumped into a co-worker who I hadn't seen in 10 plus years, mentioning it to him how good is to see him again. But he was like, are you messing with me? You said that when we hung out in March 2019. He remembered the date because we were apparently in a training class together on Fort Benning. I balked at his claim. He then pulled up photos on his phone of us from March 2019. I was shocked. I have no memory of this. I talked to my wife and she confirmed three business trips I had for training that year. I couldn't remember any of them, they are on her calendar and my work one. Then the scariest was she said yeah, that summer we rented a cabin in Vermont for a week when you got back from Fort Indian Town Gap. I have never stayed in a cabin in Vermont. Camping in a tent, yes, cabins, no. Apparently I also coached my daughter's hockey team that fall. I am a little freaked out. I am guessing I must have had a COVID-like illness that is or did affect my memory. Several guys at work told me they have had memory loss for a few days around when they got COVID. Maybe they were just being nice telling me that. Perhaps that and stress or something. TLDR, got sick, then no memories for a year. I have known this guy for many years. He has always been black. I know this for sure too because that was always a defining characteristic for him. He often spoke about his experiences as a black person. And people I know who also know him spoke about him being a major advocate for racial equality and was just heavily involved in things of that nature. I am deeply confused and kind of scared now because I follow him on social media of course, but I haven't seen him in person in several years. He posted on social media today and was tagged in a couple of photos on mutual friends social media today as well. It was a completely different man. He wasn't black. It was a complete stranger. A white man who was someone I had never seen before. I scrolled through his social media. Things seem to be all the same except it's this strange white man instead of him. He still had the same distinct identifying physical feature, think things like a unique mole, tattoo, etc. Don't want to give away too many details here, but he was a completely different person. I brought it up to my spouse who has met this guy before, and he was confused when I said he was black before because I guess he has always been white. I'm so confused and really unsettled. I feel like I don't know this guy anymore, and it's really stressing me out. Edit this to say that one. I am aware of vitiligo and again, this is an entirely different person. 2. I am also aware of what the sun can do to skin and yet again, this is an entirely different person. The only thing they share are things like tattoos, moles, etc. Facial features and everything else is completely different. 3. I am waiting to see if anything else is different. 
I haven't really done much this weekend, so I haven't left the house enough to really see if anything else I would normally encounter is different. I'm kind of nervous it is going to be something like I show up to work and suddenly I'm not employed there anymore or something like that. So hopefully if there are other changes, they're small. TL, DR, the route we've been taking for years changed, and the airport is in another spot. For a little bit of background, I live about an hour from an international airport, and I've been there about two dozen times over the past few years. Sometimes, I traveled with other people, and sometimes alone. The same is true for my husband. So, we're not exactly jet setters, but we know how to get to the airport. On the trip, it's mostly straight highway, but there's one tricky interchange to go from heading east to south. We always talk about how it's the worst part of the trip just getting into the correct lane for that spot. We made the mistake once of stopping at a nearby gas station and adding 20 minutes to our time just trying to get back into the right lane. Basically, it's the part of any trip that you dread. But it's also a part we're most familiar with and are both positive existed. Until this past Tuesday. We went to pick up my MIL from the airport and left our usual way. Everything was fine, made it to the spot and got on the interstate heading south. Nothing looked right. Drove a little longer and things were less right. So I pulled over and turned on GPS. The directions had us getting back on the interstate but headed north. Again, this has never ever been the case. That damn spot to head south is seared in my brain, and my husband was just as confused since he once missed the exit slash interchange and nearly missed a flight. Obviously, we were pretty freaked out, but we had our five years old with us in the car and my MIL arriving at the airport. We left the GPS on and let it take us to the parking garage. We were still pretty shaken up about the whole thing and questioning if it really happened, so we put our address into maps at the airport. The directions had us going the exact opposite way as our usual route. Since we got home, we've checked all kinds of different routes in every way possible. But none of them have the tricky spot in them. So it's not like we just accidentally took a different way without realizing it. There wasn't any construction, detours, etc. We took my MIL back to the airport today and took a longer route just to avoid that interchange because it freaks us both out. We're going to look at some paper maps just to verify, but we've made the same drive for years and know it well. That is, we knew it well. I edit this, the gas station I mentioned is boarded up on Google. This could just be a coincidence, but it's the only thing that's changed physically at the interchange. So I work at a retail store, and tonight I was on the mod team. We change out the price labels and move freight to a new location, we have these big carts that can hold shelves in case we need to add any to a new mod we're working on. Well, I only had one shelf on my cart which is normal for me, after I finished one of the mods I was working on I set off for the next mod, and as I was coming around a corner I felt a bump like I ran over something even though the floor was completely clear of debris. When I felt the bump I heard a sliding sound and then in loud thud, the shelf fell off the cart, no big deal. But when I picked it up and went to put it back in place, there was still a shelf in the exact spot as it was since my shift started. Now I was working with this exact cart the entire shift, I swear there was only one shelf, because of the position that it was in there, there is no way there was one set above or below it. I know there wasn't one above because I was placing the product on that shelf as I was working and the product would not have sat properly on the shelf if there another shelf above it, and I had some big boxes under it that fit perfectly below not leaving enough space for another shelf. I know this is something very small and isn't anything amazing that'll convince people, but I now believe we're in a simulation. This happened a month ago and thinking about a little longer, I figured I'd post it here, and the names are fake. I had a barbecue to celebrate the start of summer. It wasn't a huge party, maybe a dozen or so people drinking, eating some food and just enjoying the sun. Some people spend the night, one of them being my friend Miami. Miami had a set of earrings on the night of the barbecue but when she woke up, she was missing one of them. 
It was a small set of silver circular earrings. She took her single earring home and told me to tell her if I found the other. My roommate finds her earring later that day and we place it on the desk in my room to give to Miami when we see her again. Life happens, so we don't plan to see her for a while. A few days later, I find an earring on the floor. It's the exact same earring Miami wore. Okay, maybe it got moved or something, no big deal. Maybe the breeze knocked it over or something. I open my door to put it on my desk and on it is the exact same earring. There are suddenly two earrings. I mentioned to him that I thought Miami only lost one earring and he confirms that no, she did only lose the single earring. I pull out the pair of earrings. He immediately says that it's weird but hey, somebody might have the same earrings. It's not exactly a popular design but alright. I think and it hits me. No one else at this party had pierced ears. No one else could have worn earrings. I reach out to Miami and once again confirm that she's only lost one earring. I take a picture and mention that I have two of her earrings and she just laughs about it. A third earring has popped up and remained here. I'm not new to the glitches in the matrix. My best friend and I had a pretty eerie shared one about a year ago. We live in the Midwest, a rural area with many dirt roads. It's probably about the middle of the day, and we are the only car on the road. You can see for miles on these roads, albeit a few small hills, and there's no one in front of us or behind us. Suddenly we pass a side road, and a FedEx truck pulls out in front of us. No big deal, as you could see the dust cloud as he rolled up. We drive that way for a few miles, before a dip, then a small hill. The FedEx truck goes over the hill, and disappears from view, we go over the hill, and on the other side, no truck to be seen. It wasn't a small truck either, it was one of the big delivery ones. I check the dirt roads to the side, and there's no dust cloud or a sign of a FedEx truck. As I said, you could see these roads for miles, the land on either side of the street and any connecting roads were pretty flat. I process it for a moment, confused as all hell. Then my best friend kinda mutters did you see that too, and I ask her if she means the FedEx truck. She does, of course, and we both were completely. So I'm in my early 30s, pregnant, and broke up with my ex-fiancé early on in the pregnancy, mama's boy who went from ecstatic and wanting to rush the wedding to no contact after persuasion by his mom that marrying me would be awful and he needs to confirm the baby is his before doing so, despite him having a more promiscuous history than me, no reason to think I was with anyone else, and this unhinged lady only having met me once, anyway. So, I had to move back to my home state for help and decided to renovate my grandpa's old house that previous renters had basically ruined and my parents lazily left. Well, enough backstory I hope that I'm in my third trimester and luckily have not had any swelling, specifically relevant detail for this story. I also still managed to sleep pretty decently but I was worried about my first night here given my sensitivity to all of the new construction smells while pregnant, on top of the somewhat oddness of being back at my grandpa's in his bedroom as an adult, and didn't sleep well. Okay, so here's the potential glitch. I have two rings I've worn for years, every day. I don't take them off. I was having a hard time staying asleep last night and at some point adjusted the comforter and heard a thump. I realized it was one of my rings after trying to determine what it could be and feeling around. I for sure didn't take it off in bed, I have no recollection of messing with it, I don't use lotions or oils or anything to make my fingers slick, and it's never ever come off in the years I've worn it. When I found it later in the morning, I went to put it back on, and it wouldn't fit anymore. My fingers don't look swollen to me, and even some minor swelling from maybe the general effect of a new environment in the summer heat shouldn't make this ring not fit anymore. It wasn't ever tight. I can't tell if this feels like a sign, and if so is it good or bad. Bad could be being messed with and having a physical reaction to the house. Good could be that my finger was going to be too swollen for the ring for the first time ever and it just so happened to come off somehow in my sleep so it would then be protective? 
I also heard it roll to one side of the room and found it in another. Hours later, my fingers were normal, the ring still doesn't fit. The ring that's still on feels completely normal too, while this one won't budge past the middle joint anymore. Even if you could just say it's coincidental swelling, why only one finger and why did my ring come off on its own or me somehow get compelled to remove it during sleep with no recollection of it? The ring has no special meaning to me. The people who have lived here since my grandpa was awful, awful. One of them swore they saw an old man in the hallway at night dressed like grandpa dressed. My grandpa was my favorite person in the whole world and if all goes well, my baby will have his name as a middle. Please let me know what you think. We have come to the end of this compilation, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more strange stories. If you have any stories to share, email me.